So, Team Sonic Racing came out the other day, about one month from the release of CTR. How does it compare? Let's talk about it! What's up guys, Canadian Guy here, and back with a bit of an interesting video. See, you guys know I went to PAX East and got to play the demo of CTR. I was able to play it three times in total, once with Activision and twice on the show floor. I also was able to play an earlier demo at a local store multiple times. So I think I got a great feel of the game. Team Sonic Racing had just come out and I decided to pick it up and do a comparison. How does the game look? feel and play compared to CTR. The reason I'm doing this video is because there are not a lot of many kart racers out there and even fewer that are in the AAA space. For CTR and Team Sonic Racing to be exactly one month away from each other puts them in direct competition. Some people can only afford one or will have to stagger which games to buy. Also, this is a great comparison because CTR, Team Sonic Racing, and of course Mario Kart 8 are the only AAA kart racers for this generation. So without further ado, let's get to comparing. First off. Let's talk about the controls and mechanics. I gotta say, Team Sonic Racing's mechanics are definitely new and feel unique. There are some holes that are made in typical kart racers that Team Sonic Racing seems to fill, like both being a competitive but also can be a cooperative game. Now if you don't know how the game works, you race as a team of three. You and your teammates help each other out in the placements by slingshotting on someone's speed trail or even sending them your items. The higher the placement you get, the more points you get for your overall team. Whichever team has the most points wins. Crash Team Racing follows the more conventional kart racing concept of just pummeling each other to the ground and whoever crosses the finish line first wins with a bit of a different twist. That is drift boosting. While most games, even Team Sonic Racing, follows the same mechanic of drifting where if you drift, you get a boost after you let go of the button. And you get a bigger boost of a drift if you hold it even longer. Crash Team Racing throws this out the window. You can drift, but there is a drift boost bar at the bottom right corner. When it goes red, you can tap the other drift button and get a boost. Get three boosts in one slide, and you get an even bigger boost on the third. There are many things going on in the background as well, like reserves and how high you are that can determine the longevity or the speed of the boost. I have a hard time comparing these two games' mechanics because they hit two different playstyles. Team Sonic Racing hits a unique playstyle that I have not seen since Mario Kart Double Dash. It's vastly different in style, but achieves something similar. This is a game where you can race each other and be competitive, but if you wanted to, you could play together as a team. Imagine a parent and a young child playing together. Sure, the parent can stomp the kid into the ground, or they can play as a team. This game is great for couples, siblings, even parents and kids. With Crash Team Racing, however, you can only stomp one another in the ground. There is no cooperative aspect to it. But with Crash Team Racing, Racing, it allows such control of your character and your cart that you can hit ridiculous speeds. So in terms of mechanics, I'm going to leave this one alone because it does hit different tones in the kart racer scene. However, when it comes to controls, this is when things begin to become more clear. I find that Sonic's controls are just awkward. Like they're not bad, but at times things just get weird and unresponsive while Crash Team Racing's controls are sharp, responsive, and most importantly, impactful. This is where specifically Team Sonic Racing struggles. When I screw up in Team Sonic Racing, it doesn't bug me at all, because its impact on the game usually doesn't mean much unless it's right at the finish line on the final lap. Sometimes, I also feel like handing items off to my teammates just does nothing or they just do nothing with it, but in CTR, every drift, jump, and turn could decide the game, which in my opinion makes it more exciting. 
Also, the HUD in Team Sonic Racing is very cluttered and a bit messy, while CTR's is clean and to the point. I feel like I see more with CTR's HUD than I do with Sonic's. The next comparison are the characters, and honestly, I feel a bit shocked at the low amount of characters that Team Sonic Racing brings. I mean, Crash Team Racing has so far announced 25 racers, and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has 41 racers plus the Mii Custom character, so technically 42. Team Sonic Racing comes in with only 15 racers, though I will say that even though each character falls into three categories, each character is uniquely statted in Team Sonic Racing, while Crash Team Racing only has four classes of characters, which makes each racer unique in Team Sonic Racing. Now on my next comparison, I'm going to hit Sonic hard here because this is where I think Sonic fails the most. That is the tracks. There are 21 tracks in total. That's it. So far, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled has been confirmed to have over 34 tracks in total. And that's what we know so far. On top of that, a lot of these stages, some, not all, follow the same color palette of green grass, blue sky, brown dirt or sand, and magical or machine-like accents or it goes to the late night casino look with a dark sky and neon lights. Whenever I get to a track that feels unique, I am overjoyed. Now, when looking at Crash Team Racing, however, so far every track that we have seen is unique. The tracks are very different atmospheric wise, from outside on the beach to the sewer. There is a large variety of tracks, and even when there was originally two tracks that look similar, Beanox has taken upon themselves to completely revamp it, just like Inferno Island and Crash Cove. When you only have 21 tracks and a lot of them feel the same, like in Team Sonic Racing, that number feels like it's even less tracks because it feels like they're recycled. Another point I want to make is the graphics. Crash Team Racing's graphics are just beautiful and buttery smooth. Everything style-wise looks like it belongs. Team Sonic Racing though, this is a bit of a weird mixed bag of good and not great. At times the cars just look so out of place, like as if they don't belong there or the character's style and the cars don't match. I mean, look at Big here in his cart. He looks like a plastic non-detailed toy compared to this detailed cart. It just doesn't look stylistically the same. Also, look at the shadows and the jaggedness of lines. Heck, look at the chows here. The back half are just 2D pieces of paper. And this is shot on a PlayStation 4 Pro, by the way. However, Team Sonic Racing does operate at 60 frames per second on the PlayStation 4, even though it might have some frame rate drops. But we don't know what the frames Crash Team Racing runs at, but a lot of people think it's 30 frames per second with motion blur. So in terms of frame rate, TSR is seemingly better than CTR but CTR is better in the graphics department. You decide for yourself which you like better. The music for Crash Team Racing is awesome, but so is Team Sonic Racing's. The track music sounds great and exhilarating as you blast through the tracks, so applause to the audio team on both games. The customization in both games are really in-depth as well. In Team Sonic Racing though, you can actually change every aspect of your car. Flares, engine, you name it. You can even change the material of your car, like plastic or even matte metal. Now CTR has deep customization as well, with more of a variety of cart bodies, but aspects of the cart can't be altered. However, there are also a multitude of skins to choose from that change the look of your character, so both games have really great customization options with strengths in different aspects. Now when it comes to story, both of these games are light in that department. The point of the games are to race, not to have a story. I get that. But Team Sonic Racing doesn't even have rendered cutscenes. They're just hopping sprites. At least with CTR, from what we have seen, there is 3D rendered scenes in the story mode. So at least there's that. And the script for Team Sonic Racing is just, how do I put it nicely? Awful. Just awful. All you need to know is that you race as teams in the most advanced cars that my super science can create. Testing your limits on my polishing track. Su 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 super science polishing track. Now, I can't comment on the voice acting in Crash Team Racing as the game is not out yet. But man, a lot of the voice acting in Team Sonic Racing is 
bad. Now, some of you might think I'm now being nitpicky as this is just a racing game. And you're right. It wouldn't be that much of a problem if we didn't constantly hear them talk and banter to each other. Again, cluttering the HUD even more. This is not a bash Team Sonic Racing Fest. I bought the game. I paid full price for it. There is even my name here saying that I won the race. I'm not using someone else's footage to make fun of the game to make Crash Team Racing look better. Why would I pay for a game and then proceed to hate it? Heck, I don't even hate the game. I like it. In fact, I'll be streaming it this week at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thursday and Friday on YouTube on this channel. But there are issues and problems with it that I think should have been seen in production. And CTR is also not perfect, but I feel CTR is a much more polished game than Team Sonic Racing. Here's the thing, both games come in at the same price of $39.99 USD. At the moment, it would seem that you get more value from Crash Team Racing than you would from Team Sonic Racing. More characters, more tracks, actual rendered cutscenes, less cluttered HUD, and in my personal opinion, better controls. Again, this is coming from someone who has actually played both games extensively. I played Crash Team Racing at PAX multiple times and at local demos. The footage you are currently looking at and through this whole video is in fact my recorded footage when I played it off location with Activision. So you can trust me when I say I know how the game feels. So, at the moment, I have to say that I myself prefer Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled over Team Sonic Racing. It's not that I don't like Team Sonic Racing. As I said before, I like the game. The core mechanics are unique and fun, but it's aspects around the core mechanics that are just kind of bland. So, did you guys pick up Team Sonic Racing? And if you did, what did you think of it? Comment below and let me know. By the way, a huge shout out to my Patreons and sponsors on the channel. I appreciate your support and letting me be able to do this full time as I got a family to feed. If you want to support the channel, the Patreon is in the description below. And be sure to subscribe for more nostalgic content. And while you're at it, why not check out another video I recently made? Anyway, guys thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time